Hi, right, this is Mayhem News Live on our Impact Thursday for 11 1 2013. Yeah, it's always a day, but it's always the next day because uh, sometimes I'm not even around, you know, when the show comes on. Depends on what's going on. So, um, yeah, we're here today. Uh, like I said, this is Timmy Blivs or Russell, if you prefer, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, we're going to talk about some stuff that happened on TNA. Um, and, uh, it's kind of interesting, and we're going to talk about some of our sponsors as usual. So, um, show content should be about 10 minutes, and then we'll get into our sponsors real quick. Um, Impact, hmm, I don't know why we're switching to where um, Dixie Carter is actually coming out at the first of every show. I think maybe she's trying to copy Triple H and him, but anyway. Um, I found a good use for her her voice. I, I I recorded it and put it on my phone at a higher at a high intensity recording, and it drives the neighbors' dogs crazy. No, I'm just picking anyway. <laughs> I just something about her voice. I'm sorry. It just urgh. anyway. Uh, apparently, okay. You know, last week that AJ Styles uh, said he was leaving, got in a car, drove off. Pretty much, word for word, CM Punk uh, storyline, similar to what happened with when he, with him when he won the title in Chicago. Um, and of course now, you know, to, to make that look even more um, legitimate, they're actually having a TNA gauntlet tournament to determine who's going to be the next TNA world champion or heavyweight champion. Um, of course, we all know that, that after everything's said and done, um, the actual person that supposedly becomes the new TNA title holder will actually end up being the first number one contender, and then him and AJ will have a match, basically. We pretty much all know that's going to happen. Um, I mean, if they go by the storyline that basically WWE did earlier, then, you know, uh, you will notice that the video is a little better. I've actually up my... Um, my HD settings a little bit. Um, uh, we had a match between Gun with Gunner Storm versus Bromans. I'm sorry, Bromans is a joke. Um, just like the whole Spike Tear Robbie E thing, and then you had Big uh, Big Rob and all that. It's it's a joke. I'm sorry. You know Jesse may be a good wrestler, but um, Broman is just a joke. I'm sorry. Um, but Gunner is a beast and with him working with Storm, who we all know loves to fight anyway, it's, you know, they work together really well. Of course, you know, the Bromans have got to cheat to win. So, uh, they've had it, you know, because they couldn't actually probably win if they were actually, you know, wrestling straight up. But anyway, um, Dean, uh, Sting is stalked, showed backstage talking to Dixie and she basically says, Hey, you know, we're thinking about, you know, I'm tired of people saying, you're not able to come, you know, go for the title. And uh, I'm thinking just I'm going to I'm going to let that swing this week. So uh, and just for this once. And, you know, Sting kind of throws out this entitlement uh, that he was. Well, he doesn't always feel entitled. I think that was kind of a jab in her side anyway. What she was like, what does that mean? Does that, that mean? Yes. You want the gauntlet match? You want to be in there? What? I don't understand. So, um, but, all right, there's this new guy, Ethan, okay? Thus, he, uh, and of course I know, he does not look like Ryback. But, he's getting the same kind of crappy setup as Ryback did, okay? He's actually getting, getting a setup to where he's facing these uh, newcomers, these little skinny guys that are half his size, uh, it wasn't convincing when they did it with Ryback, and it's not convincing with this guy. It cheapens him. This kind of wrestling is crap. A big pile of wrestling manure. It is. You, why? If you feel, if this guy is so, and the guy seems like he's got charisma, at least, you know, seems like he can pull off a good promo. I do not understand why, hey, we're going to pad this guy's stats which everybody in the that's watching at home and everybody in the back's, back's going to know 
that the first 10 wins he gets if he goes that far with it was bullcrap. You ought to have seen the guy. The guy looked like a a, a high school wrestler. You know, uh, that kind of wrestling is bullshit. Simple. To borrow, to borrow a phrase from Boogie2988, bullshit. Anyway. Um, well, anyway, he wins, you know, and then, and, and, you know, of course, if you're facing, you know, if you're a heavyweight and you're facing a light featherweight, nine times out of 10, the light featherweight is going to lose. Anyway, uh, we have a gauntlet match, uh, pretty decent, you know, entering action. Uh, Magnus, uh, continues his push with a win in the gauntlet match by screwing Sting, um, Things may not be that good in the familia or the, the family. The, the, oh, I'll give you an offer. He couldn't. Anyway. Um, and, you know, okay, If here's what I'm confused about. Okay, Kurt Angle came back, right? Okay. Kurt Angle came back. They brought him in on this thing with Robbie Bobby Roode. And that's understandable. I like Bobby Roode, but I like Angle. And, you know, they're, they're probably, they're de- uh, both of them excellent technical referees. Wrestlers, wrestlers, what's that? What's a wrestler? Wrestlers. But what I understand is, is was he not part of the main event mafia? You brought him back, no mention of the mafia. Are we supposed to just forget that, you know, he was part of the main event mafia? I, 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 okay. Who did you hire from WC to WWE? Because they do the same shit. They'll do a storyline for two weeks and then just switch it. And we're supposed to say, oh, that didn't actually happen because it's not happening on TV anymore. Therefore, it didn't happen. So, anyway. But Magnus gets the win, which I have a feeling. There, there's two possibilities. We all pro- probably know that it's going to be very, very highly unlikely that Sting's going to turn heel. So, obviously, Magnus is going to turn heel, which is, he's been before. So, that's, you know. Uh, if Sting does turn heel, I think they need to take him back to the Joker. You know, I like the Crow Sting, don't get me wrong. Crow Sting is what got me back into wrestling. But we've seen a good guy sting as with the Joker persona. Now we want to see if he is gonna go if he is gonna turn heel. Okay. Which I doubt. But anyway, if he is gonna turn heel, wouldn't it be cool to have him come out as the Joker and be heel? And then I kind of act like this other sting. What are you talking about? I've always looked like this. I've always looked like the Joker. You know, that would be awesome. Anyway, um, I kind of like the fact of what they're doing with Abyss. Um, I, I think, you know, them switching back and forth and keep them. And I don't like bad influence, but their Sherlock Holmes thing, a little gag, that was funny. Um but anyway, uh, and then Eric Young, who we all know, is nothing but comedic gold. He's he's up there with Kali and a bunch of other th- people that that are f- so funny. Um, the fact that Kali and him are, are that funny, it's terrible that they're on two different shows. I could just see you know Eric Young walking out with Kali, you know, sitting there laughing with Hornswoggle. Anyway, it's really funny. But anyway, he comes out dressed as Joe's Park. <laughs> It actually does, except for the fact that, you know, he's a little guy compared to Joseph Park. Comes out like dressed up like Park, and it's funny as hell. He's got the got it down pat. I mean, pretty pretty down pat. It really does. And uh, then Abyss comes out and pretty much takes out bad influence. Um, and as much as I dislike uh, uh, Kaz, Kaz, I don't really have a problem with, but Daniels and his knee pads under the boat. Uh, a flare leg pants. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, well, then we have a knockout match, and as usual, it's you know with Gail Kim and and Topa or uh, T- Tapioca or uh, I forgot how to say her name. I think it's Tupa. Anyway, takes on ODB, and of course, knockouts always put on a good show. Um, Abyss take like I said, Abyss comes out, takes out Bad Influence, and then we have a Rude and Angle match, which you know with Rude winning. And then um, he actually leaves Angle laying in the ring being attended to. So I don't know what's going on with him. But uh, all right, we're going to get into some of our sponsors. Um, uh, first time I did this, the little smaller shows, I, 
I kind of run out of time, so we're we're gonna actually I'm actually made time. Um, yeah, Zach Pack Promotions. You can follow them on Facebook under Zach Pack Promotions, or you can go to their webpage, ZachPackPromotions.com. Uh, if you want to donate, and I know a lot of people can't be in Texas. Uh, if it was up here, I'd probably be going to Bustin' for Autism. Uh, but it's in Texas, and I know a lot of people says, "Well, you know, I can't go there," but you can actually donate. You know, ten, twenty, whatever, whatever you can. It helps out, you know. And uh, but they're they're gonna have some great stuff, and they've got some good auction. I mean, good uh, drawings and stuff that you can win. Um, now they have some. I think they have some uh, some designer shoes, which I have no clue about. You know, my wife doesn't either because we wear tennis shoes or boots. Anyway, but, you know, somebody might know about that. But they've got some great stuff that they're giving away, they're doing. and um, But they're working. Uh, they've got uh, a rest. You could fill up a, a good four pages with the wrestling autographs alone. You know, um, people like Sergeant Slaughter, Gene Snitsy, Greg the Hammer Valentine, Joey Image, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Now, Hack Jaw Jim Duggan's suppers are full. The eating lunch with the stars, that he's full. And you'll still be able to see him there. So, I mean, and, and Hacksaw is, is just awesome to meet. I've never met him, but I've talked to many people. He's kind of a mixture of a famous okay. wrestling star and someone's grandpa. He's really, really cool. Uh, he's really, really, he's just an all-around nice guy. He is, he's, he's awesome. Uh, and he'll sit there as long as he can and talk to you. Um, so it, it's really a nice. honky-tonk man. Rikishi. <laughs> so in Gaspar. And then uh, Joyce DeWitt uh, from Three's a Company. Uh, there's the Houston area Ghostbusters, and Ecto-1 is going to be there. Uh, Extreme Paranormals, Jason Gowen. Uh, True TV's Jackie Pusey, Iron Man 3's Iron Patriot, actor Robert Zedar, Jim Decker, Hand of God author uh, Tony Acree, and NPC bodybuilder Brett Torino. Now, she's got some new people coming. She's got a cup of, of cosplay, and I don't have their full names right now, but uh, we've got one guy. He actually dresses up as... Now, this is not something... They went down and got this crappy costume from... Halloween world and come dressed as Batman or the crow. These are professionals. This is what they do for a living. So when the guy that plays Batman walks in, you're going to think, now this is not Christopher Bale, Batman. Okay. This is not, he has an older Batman costume, but it's still cool. Uh, it's still professional. It looks like he, you know, basically the person that told me about this, um, pretty much said, you know, she thought it was one of the people that played Batman in the movie that, you know, cause she couldn't really see his face real close. And then apparently his wife is also coming and she has a multiple characters. She does a lot of cosplay characters, female, uh, X-Men, all kind of stuff. So, um, it's going to be kind of cool. Uh, then we have another sponsor, fightdisabilityslurs.wordpress.com. Um, basically, we're, we're just out to stop people from using slurs, period. But disability slurs uh, are close to our heart because, you know, our son's got Down syndrome. So um, we're trying to stop people from using it. Um, also, we're also pushing a thing where we're trying to boycott uh, Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know if you heard about this, but there was a little girl with lupus who needed help with her from her dad who brought her to a party there from a family member's party. Uh, she needed to go to the bathroom. He was the only person there uh, that, would, that could help her, the family member. Uh, he asked them if he could go into the female bathroom, if they would check it, make sure nobody was in there, and let him use the bathroom. And they told him no. They didn't care what was wrong with her or what she needed. Uh, basically, um, they were all kind of upset and reported it to a corporate office. Corporate office gave um, pretty much a that they were going along with the manager. The manager had, knew what he was talking about. Uh, but Chuck E. Cheese does not uh, meet ADA, which is the American Disabilities Act uh, standards. And we're trying to uh, you know boycott them. Uh, first of all, uh, places like um, even some of the newer ones, people places like Chuck E. Cheese and 
and what was the other one? The adult version. Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. I'm sorry. I hate to tell them, but it's overrated. It's overpriced and it's um, outdated. Um, why should I go there to play video games when I've got a 360 sitting right here? I've got a game. Uh, you know, I can actually get games delivered to my door. I don't even have to leave if I truly don't want to. If it's raining outside, I said, man, I want another game. I can just have a game delivered from Gamefly. I don't even have to go there. And I get better pizza from, from Papa John's, um, you name it. Okay. So from any of the main major manufacturers from pizza. So I, I just don't understand, but we're trying to push that. Uh, so if you can boycott, you know, them, uh, I want to thank throttle for the new blood, uh, theme song. Uh, they do have a new album. It's uh, razor wire finish line uh, available on iTunes. Um, all their stuff is their singles albums. And I want to give a shout out to blast 52. And uh, Blast 52 is an Ireland band that me and my wife listen to a lot. Uh, we're friends with the uh, drummer and his, her boyfriend, who's actually uh, the main two accounts from their Twitter. That's at Blast 52. And Stephanie is uh, at Blast 52 Drummer. Uh, there, there'll be a paper at the end of this video. There'll be a picture of their YouTube page, and it'll have their where you can buy the stuff. Uh, if you go to their YouTube, you can actually listen to some of the stuff before you buy it, so you can, you know. Uh, also, um, I, I got kind of some friends I met on uh, Instagram. Uh, we have a Modern Warfare or Call of Duty clan, uh, Echo Company Incorporated, and I kind of met uh, the girls with big big guns clan. They're they're some really nice ladies, all women. Uh, they're really cool. Uh, they seem really respectful, and um, I'm going to put their logo at the end just to let everybody know about them. Um, and I also want to send our thoughts to Gabe Leal and his family, uh, and anybody whose family is, has a child fighting cancer, uh, you know, send your prayers and out to those people. And I want to thank Chance Prophet, uh, a very, very, very good. I, I call him a good friend. He's, he's a nice guy. Uh, he's a good Christian and, and, and a good wrestler to boot. So, um, uh, that's been the show for today. I appreciate everybody who listens and, and keeps up with us on our webpage. Also, on when you see uh, the first part of the show, you'll on our graphic. I'll I give you the mayhem newscom You can actually go to there and see all of our shows. Uh, some people uh, either for some reason don't have YouTube. Um, sometimes their computer won't play if it's an older one, but you can actually look at it on the webpage because it kind of weakens it down. So other ones, but uh, I appreciate it. Uh, this has been Mayhem News Live, uh, Impact Thursdays, and I'm going to let Throttle take us out, and we are gone.